I think most of us like to go to horror movies for a good scare, and there's nothing more exciting than the sound of rock music. But what do these things have in common? Nash the Slash, an imaginative musician who has combined these two thrills and taken his successful show on the road. But Nash the Slash isn't any ordinary performer. Let's put it this way. He may have a face that only a mother could love, but as you're about to see, no one will know. Nash the Slash is unique in a number of ways. First, he's the only violinist to make his reputation as a heavy rock player. And secondly, though his music sounds like a full rock band in flight, he performs it solo, all alone on stage with a battery of lights, dials, and switches, which electronically multiply the sounds under his control. I was supposed to meet with Nash the next day, but he called ahead to warn me that he had been stricken with the flu and that he had to recuperate before he left on tour that weekend. Well, I came prepared, but I was not prepared for what I found. Nash is a collector of horror movie memorabilia, a fan of the great horror stars of the past. His downtown apartment is a little like a crypt, filled with all the souvenirs of a lifetime obsession with the terror trade. A classically trained musician, he rebelled as a teenager, but he followed his bizarre imagination into the career that he's made for himself in the rock world. It was a little strange at first, but when I finally got to meet Nash, I had the feeling that there was a lot of humor to his morbid fascination. Nash is a character in a drama of his own fantasy, a rock horror star who imagines himself at the mercy of kids and rock fans that he entertains. Why do you hide behind bandages? Um, it's illusion. It's part of the illusion. What's the illusion that you're trying to uh, give off? Some people ask, what's the idea behind the bandages? Is he, and people ask, is he, have you got leprosy? Is he, is he, they always ask my crew, have I got some weird disease, or is he incredibly ugly, or... Uh... Your act is pretty gory. Are you trying to scare people? Well, to quote Boris Karloff, I, my intention is to shock but not offend. Why are kids so attracted to you? Comic books, comic book characters. Comic books historically, and that kind of imagery has always been offensive to parents. It's always been considered like Kiss, the same mentality. And so kid, it's a very clean, healthy way of kids to rebel against parents is to hold up before their parents an image of some very outrageous comic book character and, and say, you know, isn't this guy wonderful? And, and when you have it not only an image, but as well as on vinyl, and the kid's up in his bedroom playing this loud, obnoxious rock and roll music, then it makes it even better from the kid's point of view. A funny thing is, though, I have an awful lot of parents who like my music, and their kids like my music. I mean, I get letters from parents writing me for their 10-year-old son or daughter, asking for a poster or an autograph or something. So it's, it crosses all the boundaries. to be recognized for your image but not recognized for your face 
the funny thing is, they, uh, I, that, that so-called, you know, ego flattery, I guess, I, that's satisfying enough to me on stage with an audience as well as the mail I get. I don't real. I prefer my anonymity on the, on the street. And, um, that's, uh, that's just the way I am. I just, uh... Are we ever going to see your face on stage sans bandages? Oh, probably sans bandages, but then there might be something else in the place of the bandages. There will always be an illusion. There will always be a form of theater. <laughs>